I am Melissa Stevens, and you are joining me here today on The Encaustic Edge. I have my camera set up, and we should be starting on time here. It's about 10 o'clock, and I will um, encourage you guys to use the live chat and let me know where you're checking in from and uh, uh, I will respond to you in kind, and I'm looking forward to spending some time with you this morning. Today we're going to be talking about creative carving. Um, as you can see, I have my table set up here with some encaustic boards and some more traditional encaustic carving tools. We're not going to be talking about any of these today. We're going to be talking about the unusual and the strange. I am very excited to share this with you. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes and uh, please go ahead, use the live chat, tell me uh, where you're coming from, and if you have any questions, make sure you go ahead and pop those in, and as I go along, I will go ahead and read those off and answer any uh, questions that you might have. So again, creative carving. These are the tradition tools. I am gonna go ahead and remove those because we are not going to be talking about these. Um, these are like uh, dental tools and scraping tools, exacto knives. These are used for a, a variable uh, texture and line. Um, so we're just gonna put those aside right now because we are not going to talk about those. All right, so here we go. We are going to talk about the unusual carving tools. So the ones that I have for you today are a compass. A compass you can get at the drugstore or a Target, or you can buy them at garage sales a lot of the time. So it's a very inexpensive tool. And I'm gonna pull this out of here. And uh, as you can see, you can, uh, this one's really, really small. There are others that are larger that would give you a broader, bigger type of circle. This is, this is if you wanted to make that perfect circle. Uh, there's a lead here at the tip, and this is your, um, actually this is the lead, and this is your tip that you put into the center point and then carve around. It's very cold here in my studio, so I am going to go ahead and warm the surface area before I go ahead and carve the line into the board. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm using a torch this morning, and I'm not warming the board to melt, to fuse the wax. I just really want it to be kind of warm and tacky so that, that, that feels pretty good, so that the tool will be able to indent onto the paint and make a line. So I'm gonna try and do this so that you can see well. So I'm going to kind of hit it lightly first, and then I will make it a little deeper. Looks like my lead is moving a little bit. So there you can see I've got a really nice shaped circle, and you can see that my lead kind of got bogged down with a little bit of the warmer wax. Um, and it also moved a little bit. I probably could tighten that a little bit. But there I've got some really, a really perfectly shaped circle. I can get rid of that center dot if I wanted to just by fusing it a little bit. Very slowly so that I don't damage my other line or I could go in later and, and paint over it as well. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it the way that it is. I can then go in on top of that with encaustic paint to fill those lines. 
but this morning I'm not going to be using any encaustic paint. I'm only going to be filling line with using uh, the R&F uh, encaustic sticks, the oil sticks. This is a blending stick and uh, the blending stick is used first so that the color that I use later doesn't uh, stain the encaustic paint so it'll come off clean. So I'm just going to rub a little bit of that on my board first. Very, very little goes a long way. And then I'm going to go ahead. This is uh, r and uh, Graphite Gray. It's one of my favorites. And it just allows for a little bit of a tint. And I'm going to go ahead and use my finger to gather a little bit of that oil stick and then rub it directly on there push it down into those cracks. And then I'll take a paper towel and wipe away the excess. And you'll see that beautiful line that's created by the, um, by the circle that we made with the compass. Really, really simple tool, doesn't cost much, and it is, um, you know, inexpensive, easy to find, but not your typical carving tool. So I could go in and do multiple circles, create my whole design based on, um, on making circles with the compass. So I'm going to go ahead and put that away for now. All right. So another unusual tool is, um, well, you know, I'm going to start out with a story first. So. My family um, loves to kind of have fun with me as we go around and, and I kind of think about things really differently than the rest of my family. Um, my parents were moving out of their home and moving from Texas to Minnesota and they were getting rid of a lot of the things in their, uh, in their home. So I went to Texas to go and help them kind of unload all of this stuff that they had in their house and um, my, my parents were like, oh, go ahead and take a look in the kitchen, in the garage, and find what you can you know, use at home and go ahead and, and take it before we sell. And I was uh, looking in the kitchen with my sister and I picked up this pasta cutter. It's, it's an old pasta cutter with a, the little lid here and it's got this great uh, spiral round part here. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's just perfect. And my sister looked up at me and she said, I didn't know that you made homemade pasta. And I said, no, 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 I don't. This is for art. She's like, oh, she's like, you really look at things differently than the rest of the world. And it's true. I think artists have a knack for looking at something, seeing what it's actually used for, and then thinking beyond that and saying, hmm, what can I do with that? So that's what I was thinking when I found this pasta cutter. And you could probably pick one up at the dollar store or find one again at an estate sale or a garage sale. Um, so again, it doesn't, your tools don't need to cost a lot. Uh, and you're gonna find as I go down this list that there's a lot more that is like practically free. So again, cold in my studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and warm my uh, and caustic painting one more time, just in the area that I'm planning on using the pasta cutter, just to make it kind of warm and tacky. Feels pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and, wow, look at that. I'm gonna bring that a little closer so you can see you see those lines on there? That's just beautiful. Nice thin lines all parallel with one another. This is a lot easier than using an X-Acto knife and trying in a ruler and doing line after line after line. Um, I could even go ahead and do some cross hatching, making lines go across there. In, in a pattern of cross hatching. And again, I'm gonna go ahead 
and use a little bit of the blending stick. If you missed it earlier, the blending stick is uh, so that the oil stick color does not stain the surface area of your painting. So again, I'm going to just rub a bit of that on there. Sometimes the oil stick, also depending on the color, the reds and the blues, the really highly uh, pigmented oil sticks, they have more of a tendency to stain the encaustic paint uh, than others. Again, this is, this is just the slice that I took off the top of the oil stick, and very often I will use the leftover ink that is in the skin that I cut off because, like I said, a little bit of this stuff goes a really long way. You can see how I'm rubbing that in and it is uh, falling into those carved lines so beautifully. So let's go ahead and take our paper towel and wipe off that excess. And because I put that blending tool on first, it's coming off really nicely. And again, to do the mega clean, I will add a bit of baby oil to my paper towel to get all of that off. Oh my gosh, loving these lines, just gorgeous. All of those beautiful lines. Think of all the things you can do with a pasta cutter, you guys. Oh my gosh, so awesome. Again, if you are here and staying around, please leave me a comment or a question there. I just threw in a quick hello to you guys. And um, so we are cooking with gas here. So we've just wiped off our oil stick from our handy dandy pasta cutter carving tool. Unusual, fun, lots of uses. Now this next one is, this next creative carving tool is one of my absolute favorites for creating really full bodied backgrounds for paintings. Uh, I use it, I've used it a lot in my earlier works, but it still kind of stands the test of time and it still remains one of my very favorite uh, carving tools. And it's very, very inexpensive. It is a plastic knife. This one's kind of see-through, so uh, it's kind of hard to spot on my camera here, but you can see that there are ridges on a plastic knife. Uh, you could use a metal knife as well, or you could try using a steak knife versus um, a knife that cuts bread. They all have different uh, teeth on the end here. Plastic knives are great because Normally, when you buy a pack of the plastic knives, forks, spoons together, um, I know when we have parties, it's mostly the forks that are used and not the knives and the spoons. So a really great way to use them is in your encaustic studio. So the thing that I love to do with these edges, I can very well make lines just like I did with the pasta cutter, doing just straight lines with those teeth which can be really pretty, but I love to do cross hatching. And it is so fun to just kind of work across your board and you kind of get into a rhythm. Just remember to take the excess wax off of your knife so that it doesn't bog down on top of your surface. Um, the worst thing is when you're carving or cutting on your board and you end up with a big smear of all of that encaustic paint that you has built up on the surface of your carving tool and you just and it slides across and then you have to rework it to try and get all of that off. So here I'm creating the cross hatching on the surface area of the painting. If you can see that in the light, there we go. 
Oh, it likes to keep popping, popping on and off. I'm not quite sure why. Um, so, so that, that is pretty good. good. All right, so that is just beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it again with the oil stick so that you can see it better. Starting off a little bit with the blending, tool, blending stick again. Just kind of rubbing that around with my finger. And then again, I'm going to take the skin and rub the excess on there. You're going to be able to see this right away. And it is just stunning. Once you get this on your painting, it... Um, I tend to uh, do this and then depending on what I fill the line with, I will very often do layers of clear and caustic medium over the top and the edges sometimes will be a little bothersome and so I will go ahead and um, paint around those to kind of cover up those edges and it just creates this beautiful border to this gorgeous line that you're creating. So I'm going to go ahead and get my handy handy paper towel, wipe off the excess. I may not even need the baby oil this time. Wiped off so nicely. So there you can see this gorgeous line. Oh, I just love that. Still a favorite. You know, we all have our tried and trues, and this one is definitely it for me. So plastic knife, guys, plastic knife. I think it is one of the better tools that you can use to create this just gorgeous, gorgeous line. Uh, and get creative with the creative carving tool. You know, you could maybe use the tip or the, the other edge. Um, maybe you could warm your encaustic painting and do more of a, an imprint. Let's try it. I don't know. I'm up for anything. So let's heat up just to see if it works. Give you give you a heads up. That time I heated a little more than just a, a general warning. Let's see if I can get some kind of a... Oh, yeah, I did. I totally did. Let's go ahead and I'm going to skip the, the blending tool for a minute and just see what we get here. Lots of wine today. Let me throw away the oops, trash is here. Throw away my skin here. Let's see if that not too bad. So there you go. You can imprint the knife on the other end and end up with a an interesting design there too. That's the the handle part of the knife right there. So I could have warmed the painting a little bit more maybe and not had to press as hard maybe in there. Uh, maybe you could do some sort of a roll up with the end. Loads and loads of different opportunities to, to make marks. So this is getting kind of full. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my other board here. Um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at our next carving tool, our next creative carving tool is, does anyone know what this is? Let me hold my hand under it so you can see. Anybody, any guesses about what this might be? You guys are a quiet crew. I have in my hand, this is a handle for, you put it in the end of a corn cob. There should be two so that you don't get your hands messy when you're eating corn. Um, so that this has a really nice dual tooth on the end. So you have the opportunity to create, again, side-by-side -side line. So it would do the same kind of uh, line movement as the pasta cutter. It's just that it would be side by side. So let's take a look at that. Again, I'm going to heat my painting really quickly here. Again, just until it's tacky. I'm not looking to, to melt it. It's warm, nice and warm. And then I can go ahead and take my tool, make sure that it's flat, 
and carve down. I can just carve down to the layers underneath, or I can choose to fill those lines. Uh, cross hatching with this, you might have to wait a little bit for your paint to cool a little more. Um, but you're gonna, you could potentially do some sort of a cross hatching there. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up so you can. Okay, I was getting, it's a mirror image. There we go. So there you can see the lines that I created with the corn cob holder. I, I guess that's what I'll call it. The corn cob holder, right? So it did all those beautiful lines there. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for that to cool just a little bit. And then I will go ahead and, and add the oil stick. So there's lots of different oil sticks out there. Uh, I find that the RNF oil sticks really are my favorites. Uh, they are always soft in the middle. Sometimes there's another brand that I will buy, oh, and the name of it is escaping me right now, but you can buy this other kind and it will get really, really hard on the edges and um, the, the consistency of the oil paint inside, although it is soft, it takes a little bit more effort to get to it. I find that the RNF oil stick really, the, the hard core that goes around the outside, that forms around the outside, consistently tends to be thinner. And so you really feel like you are getting a lot more product for uh, what you're paying for. So I'm going to go ahead and this is a white, titanium white that I'm putting into here because my painting is darker. But again, you can see the great line that I'm getting from the carving here. So do you see the detail on that line? I'm trying to give you the best look here. So I could go in and obviously I'm just showing you the line. Um, I would eventually have to fuse all of the oil stick that I embed into these lines. You can't just leave it and paint over the top of it. You could potentially do that, but you would have to wait for that oil paint to dry completely. So the key to uh, fusing this is if you want to maintain the lines that you've got, you do a light fusing and then you check it with your hand to see if it's, if it's done. Uh, if it's not, you do another light fusing. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. Down a little bit. I'm, I'm just going to do a quick, quick light fusing. You, you might see a little bit of bleeding going on with the paint, but with these lines, that's not a huge deal because you can, after your wax cools, you can just go in with a straight blade and, um, okay, I'm sorry, I have to turn this light off. It keeps blinking. Pardon my, uh, I'm going to have to go around, my apologies. I felt like I was in a stop motion picture. Boom, 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 all the lights go on and off, on and off. Okay, so I'm going to just show you really quick. You can see the, the bleeding that occurred a little bit here. When my paint surface cools enough, I can just take a straight edge razor and just scrape that away and it'll completely disappear. I could potentially continue to heat it and um, more and more and, um, and try to manipulate the line that I've created as well. That's an option for me as well. So here I'm just fusing the line. Again, just doing really light fusing and then taking the heat off because I don't want to lose the 
the visual texture that I've created. So I do just a really light fusing and then once it's cooled I'll touch it with my hand and if I don't get any paint up on my hand I know that it's safe for me to paint over the top or uh, work in other media without the risk of smearing or altering the way that the paint or that the oil stick looks on my painting. So we're going to go ahead and move along with our other tools. I have several more here to get through. Uh, the next tool that I'm going to show you is something that pretty much everyone has in their home. You just saw me waving it here in front of me. Uh, the tool that I'm going to show you is a ballpoint pen. And you can use it in many different forms. Um, the kind that I like is the one that has the the cap that you take off because you can use the cap in a lot of different ways to carve with. There is a hole generally on the top of the lid. You can see through it to my painting even. And I like to use that to make these little circle marks. Makes these really great little, well, it's hard to see it on the camera. They're right here in the dark. I'll go ahead and lighten them with the oil stick and you'll be able to see them. You can also carve using the pointy part of the lid and make a line with that. And you can draw directly onto your board. It doesn't, your pen does not need to be working at all. In fact, it's probably better if the pen is broken because then you're not destroying the pen. So I went ahead and just carved in some line there. And uh, I will go ahead and fill that line now with the oil stick. So that you can see it better. All right, moment of truth here. Maybe sometimes I don't get my uh, lines in there too deep, in which case the oil stick doesn't stay too long in it before I, if I wipe it off, I'm getting more of the surface area. But there you can see those beautiful uh, pen tip dots that I created. And this is my drawn line with the pen. And this is the line that I created with using the, the pointy part of the cap. So that is a great option. I'm going to maybe try and do some other line here. That's a little deeper than what I did before. What do I got here? Okay. So that's better. I wasn't pressing hard enough. So there's a really great line created by the pen tip right there. Right. I feel like you have better visibility on this white one, so we're going to go back to that uh, so you can see a little bit better because some of these tools make really small marks. Uh, the next tool that I'm going to take you through is Something that you can find at um, Joanne Fabrics has really great sales, and this is a, just a small tool. I find I found mine at a reuse center. I do a lot of shopping at reuse centers because, again, there's so much there that to look at and to see that people just discard it because they use it once and they don't need it again. And this is a great way for you to recycle tools. So I go to these reuse centers and just the, my, the wheels are turning in my head the whole time. 
and I'm thinking, what can I use that for? What can I use that for? Uh, I'm not trying to add to my, my hoarding, which I kind of do in my studio. I think, I think artists, artists are great, great collectors. collectors. But it's, it's so much fun to think outside the box and uh, try to figure out new and different ways that you can create line on your paintings using these different tools. This tool is, I believe it's called a sewing tracer. So, so it's, it's what, what like quilters or people who are using patterns would use to trace like a chalk line or uh, I, I guess, guess you use some sort of tracing paper, paper almost like a carbon, carbon paper in sewing. I don't know, I'm not a sewer, so I can't say for sure. But it has these, it's kind of like a spur, uh, a cowboy spur. It's got all these really great little spikes on it. So, so I'm, I'm sure that you've seen paintings that have like these little dotted lines and it actually looks like the artist has taken a needle and thread and sewn little dots across the seam. And that is just a, it's such a magical kind of line that can be created. And I just love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat my or just a little bit. Again, if your studio is warm inside, you don't need to, if your boards are already kind of room temperature, you don't need to do that. Right now it's probably about 40 degrees in my studio, so it's a little chilly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my tracer. Oh, I just love this. It's so pretty. So there I've got really great dotted lines, I don't even need to go in a straight line. I can make it rounded, you can do it any kind of style that you want. I see that you're very far away. Can you see those dotted lines that I made? I'm trying to really still so you can see. Ah, oh, I just love them. So again, I could leave those as is, or I could go ahead and, and fill them. I'm gonna fill them and just see if you can see them better on the board. I'm wondering what you all are making these days. Are you spending a lot of time carving into your paintings? Are you um, playing with color? Are you trying to work three-dimensional? Tell me about your projects. Tell me what you're doing. I'd love to hear. This uh, channel is all about sharing information, so I really hope that you will throw in a comment, or even if you're not watching live, if you're watching this after the fact, I check my channel all the time, and uh, I will definitely chat back with you, and we can have a conversation. So there's that beautiful dotted line made by the sewing tracer. So, oh, I love it. It's so pretty. So imagine that, like a light, bright, light yellow or white on a dark background, or like you can really uh, play with your sight lines by adding great textural uh, lines, like using the, the sewing, sewing tracer. tracer. Mine, Mine comes, comes with, with a little lid, lid. it's a little plastic lid that fits on top, and I find that it is kind of sharp, and so if you're like me and you set all your tools upright in a can, you go reaching in, it is good to kind of keep the lid on there so that you don't cut yourself. All right, we're getting near the end, I got three more. So along the lines of creating these dots on your surface area. I have a tool, it is an art tool, but its original use is for paper. And this is a paper embosser. You guys familiar with these? So the embossers have different tips on them, this, and, and they all have little balls on the end. This one is rather a small ball, and this one's even tinier. It's almost like a, like a pick, it's so small. Um, but it's, the embossers are used, you use patterns like a stencil, 
and you uh, use the ball end to trace the stencil on the paper, and then it makes the other side of the paper raised. So it embosses it, duh. So uh, I use my embossing tool to create dots. So I've already kind of got a dot inside my, uh, my circle that I created with the compass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to make more polka dots in there. You do end up getting a little bit of build up on the tip, so you wanna make sure to remove that as you're using it. Oops, got a little gunk on there. So I've got my polka dotted ball here. So it looks like I did clean and fast enough and it took a little bit more off there than I wanted it to. Okay, and then I could come in and even use the small polka dot one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the line that we created here. So I've seen uh, my students use this tool uh, to create beach scenes. They'll use the little dot maker on top of the embossing tool to almost emulate grains of sand. Or um, I like to just use it to maybe add a little bit of interest on a line or on uh, a section that maybe needs a little bit more, maybe it's getting lost in the scene or something like that. Nice and bright for you. So now it looks like a Dalmatian planet. <laughs> and uh, you can see the depth of the dots. Very nice and focused. Oh, it's really trying hard to focus. Um, so that's kind of a fun tool to use as well, the embossing tool. And there's no risk of you, well, you could poke it yourself with a tip, but it's, uh, it's round, so you're not going to cut yourself. The next one that I have is, again, something that most people have in their homes all the time. And you can buy them by the box load and uh, never run out, it seems. Um, you can make chains with them. You can do all sorts of different things with them. Uh, but I like to use them as a carving tool, and that is the paperclip, the humble paperclip. Um, you can use the round side, and you can use the pointed side. And there are different sized paperclips, too. So it's very versatile. I'm going to go ahead and use the bigger one first so you can kind of see its carving power. And I'm going to use the bigger board here because this is going to take up a chunk. Again, I'm going to warm the surface of my painting a bit. And then I'm going to take my handy tool and Oh my gosh, so it works just like some of the more traditional tools that I showed you earlier. And I've got these different sizes and they're just super easy to use, right? So I just carved all this beautiful line using paper clips. Right? I don't have to spend a lot of money on expensive tools. I can just go through my desk drawer and pick out a few things and experiment. And that's kind of how these things happen. You, you figure out how to use these unusual carving tools just by playing around with things that you might throw out or sell at your next garage sale or uh, take to Goodwill or whatever. So again, a box of these is what, like five bucks, two to five bucks, and you get a bazillion of them. So use some in your office and take some out into your studio and get busy.
I'm going to just scrape off some of that excess. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill those lines for you so you can see them a little bit better. I could potentially just leave these lines as is and incorporate them in my painting, showing off the layers underneath. Or you can go ahead and you can fill them just for the sake of allowing you to see the lines that I created a little better, I will choose to fill them. And these are really wide, wide, deep lines. So um, again, depending on the size of your paper clip, it could be just about any variant of size. Okay. Again, because, because they're, they're, this, this is wider, wider it's, it's not going to stay in there as readily as if it were a thinner line. But there you can see that are the lines that were created by the paper clip. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. The last tool that I'm going to show you, I've got some stuff falling over here. Again, can be found in your home. You can go to the dollar store and you can get it. Uh, you might have one that you bought a long time ago thinking, oh, I'll use that, and then never used it. That was the case for me. Uh, this was something that I purchased thinking, oh my gosh, I've always wanted one of those. But then you realize that you've gone 20 years without one and you never missed it. Um, and apple core. Now, some of you might be big uh, apple, or this might be actually... This might actually be for peppers. It looks a little small for an apple. You could use an apple core as well. This is for, I believe it is for peppers, like for um, jalapeno peppers or serrano peppers to take the middle seed part out. You stick it down into the, into the pepper and turn it and it it's supposed to tear it out. I think I tried using it a couple times and I failed miserably. So I decided that these little spiky edged circle tool would work so much better in my studio. So I went ahead and uh, put it into my tool drawer here in my studio. So let's go ahead and take a look at the kind of mark making that we can make with the pepper core. So this has kind of the similar markings as the um, what is it called? The sewing tracer. I always forget the name of it. And But it's in a circle form. So that can be really, really fun and uh, give you a lot of possibilities for design. Filling this. So much fun. Wipe that off. My paper towel is a little dirty. I could probably use it in a clean one, but we're here at the end, so I'm going to stay the course. And there you can see those great circle shapes so pretty and they look like they were sewn on there you know can you see them so that there includes my show i wanted to go ahead and remind you guys to uh to go ahead and hit the hit the subscribe button below and Make sure to type in your comments and ask questions. You know, I look, look forward, forward to, to spending, spending more time, time with you. you. But, but thanks, thanks for joining, joining me today. today. Have, Have a good, good one. Bye-bye.